With more insights into emotional freedom techniques, this is another free sample taken from the EFT Hub resource, featuring over 100 hours of tapping material and over 50 top tapping professionals. Here is your host and creator of the Hub, Gary Williams. And now we're going to share some time with Sue Beer. Hello, Sue. Hello, Gary and everyone. And I know that you're, you're very experienced in the topic that we're about to talk about and uh, you do other things as well, don't you, at your practice in, in London? Uh, yes, I, I do. Yes. Um, I specialize in the area of addictions and helping people to overcome those problems. Um, and I, I, I guess the twin side of the same coin is, is that I've come to realize that, in a sense, all problems are addictions or some kind of state that we've got stuck in. And um, so it's a, you know, it's a question of you know, what, what isn't an addiction, in, in a sense, Right. Did, did you really get involved, though, with addictions before you got involved with EFT? Um, yes, I, because I was a practicing therapist, you know, psychotherapist, NLP, a hypnotherapist pre-EFT, I'd already been working with, with addictions and, you know, and, and a whole variety of different emotional problems as well. Um, but I guess I originally got into addictions through, through you know, my own o- overcoming smoking and, and alcohol problems, really. So it's something that was personally of interest to me originally. Right. So you had some experience, you know, hands-on as it were. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And has, has that helped you then uh, bring that into EFT and work with it? Yes, I, I think so. Because what has, has always fascinated me is is how addictions work how how they can get such a kind of grip on us um and being able to kind of understand from from the inside how that works i think is really really helpful in um guiding other people to to heal themselves really to kind of you know undo how they've got themselves tied up in a, in a whole way of thinking that's actually maintaining the problem um and i just think that that with eft we get to um be able to sort of go deeper into into our own unconscious processes and so that sort of speeded up the the, the way that um you know we we can understand, you know, addictions and therefore you know, undo them. So, um, yes, it, it, you know, to answer your question, it, it goes, you know, before EFT, but also I think that the EFT has kind of um, just just helped in, in so many different ways to, to further our, our understanding of all kinds of, you know, emotional, psychological, physical problems, really. And what would you say were the major discoveries that you did make when you were exploring the subject? That one of the, the main things I think is is that things aren't always what they seem. Like for instance, um, you know, you, you would think that we could maybe become you know, addicted to to things that that give us something that is positive. Um, you know, you can imagine that if we're talking about emotional states, we'll want you know more of feelings like joy and and happiness and um, peace calm those those kind of emotional states and, and qualities that's kind of obvious but what i've discovered along the way is is that we're often actually addicted to to, to negative states to you know to states of you know anger rage we can even be addicted to the problem state itself because right. because it can give us something at a deeper level or in a way that's kind of outside our conscious awareness that we that we actually value so you know, working with you know, addictions and also this sort of view that I have that in a sense, you know, all problems and all stuck states are, are forms of addictions means that we have to get a sort of sleuth-like detective head on so that we kind of look at look beyond what seems to be the case on the surface and look at ways that, that are paradoxical and um, that seems to be um, a very important way to to actually allow us to move on not not just understand what's going on with addictions because there's an awful lot of literature and and research and in fact you know money spent on describing addictions Mm -hmm. and you know uh, you know sort of lists of you know personality traits that um are likely to to lead us to addictions or you know the, the whole sort of disease model of of addictions has, has been given a huge amount of, of attention, but things that, that 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 describe the problem 
absolutely contribute to, to the field but won't necessarily allow us to move on from it or to, to find sort of solutions that, that work in the long term. Right. Is, is it possible to then be addicted to things such as you know, anger or, or creating drama in your life? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, th- I think that this fits in with what we call psychological reversal in, in EFT terms. Um, you know, psychological reversal being when, we, when we, we sort of continue doing something against our, our own best intentions, you know, to, you know, just to give you a, a quick example, it'd be something like, um, you know, we've absolutely sworn that we'll be on a diet from Monday and then, you know, by Wednesday we absolutely have to have that chocolate cake. Um, right. now everybody has some kind of an, an experience of that because it's a, it's a universal phenomenon really. But um, what we're saying here is that when we actually value a problem state in a way that it's not obvious even to ourselves, might be obvious to, to others, then we've got a reason for, for maintaining that and, and it will appear that we're doing something against our, our own best interests or against what we've said that we want to do. Um, but if we ask a question like, you know, what, what does it give us? What, what does, you know, being angry or being in, in a rage give us that we're actually valuing? Then we're kind of on the right track of beginning to sort of being able to interpret the the language that goes with these problem states. It's like they have a sort of language of their own. Yeah. Verbally and you know and and non verbally. 